Okay, which I want to talk about. Yeah, here it is. So we have our mass spectrometer. It looks like this. I'm going to walk my way through to make sure that you understand what's going on here. We have two different plates. We have an electric field. The way they've drawn it, that electric field is down. If this is our electric field, the top plate is Mohit, positive or negative? Uh, positive. This is our positive plate. This is going to be our negative plate. In this part of the picture, we have a magnetic field, which is into the page. It's a constant magnetic field. This part is called the velocity selector. What we have is charges that are going through the velocity selector with some sort of velocity. While they're going through the velocity selector, we have forces acting on them. Uh, we'll draw our positive charge. Free body diagram. Give me forces acting on the velocity selector, uh, on the charge in the velocity selector. You check. Sure, I'm looking for the forces acting. I'm not going to, we're not going to draw the free body diagram here because it's going to get um, muddled, but I'm going to draw it right here. So what forces are acting on that positive charge right there? Um, the electric field going down. True, the electric field is down, but I want to know what's the direction of the force, the electric force then on this positive charge. Uh, going downwards. Going down, okay. So the electric force would be down. There is another force. What is the other force acting on it, Mr. P? Ah, but this, we're going to assume that these are atomic particles, that the force of gravity is negligible for what we're working on here. So give me another one, Sarah Jane. Mm. I don't know. Okay, that's okay. Jenkins? Magnetic force. The magnetic force. Velocity, magnetic field, magnetic force. All right. We're going to sum the forces in the y direction. We get that the magnetic force minus the electric force is equal to mass times the acceleration in the y direction. The point of the velocity selector is we're going to only select those charges that are moving at a certain velocity, and that velocity will make it so that they are moving, accelerating in the y direction with zero acceleration. So they're moving in a constant velocity in the x direction. There's no acceleration in the y direction. So we have the acceleration is equal to zero. In other words, the magnetic force is equal to the electric force. The equation we're going to use for the magnetic force is what, Um, okay. uh, Q times no, 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 no. I A. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I B. I do that. Potterella, help him out. The equation we're going to use for the electric force, Jenkins. Tough question. <laughs> That's right. We get to harken back all the way. Chapter. Uh -huh. <coughs> Who's got an electric force? Sounds it. Q times E, remember the electric field is defined as the electric force divided by the charge. If you remember, the electric field is equal to the electric force per unit charge. Therefore, the electric force is going to be equal to Q times the electric field. Please? Thank you. the velocity and the magnetic field. No. Velocity and magnetic field would be 90. 90 degrees. Sine of 90 is just 1. So the velocity is going to be equal to the electric field divided by the magnetic field. In other words, every charge that has a, that has a where the, where the velocity is equal to the electric field divided by the magnetic field 
will go straight. Every other velocity will not go straight and therefore will not go into the next part of the mass spectrometer. And of note, if we instead had a negative charge, what class would be the direction of the electric field? Or electric force? Uh, Up. What then would be the direction of the magnetic field? Uh, Down. So does it matter whether it's a positive or negative charge? Yes. No. It will still move at a constant velocity. It then is then going to enter into the um, area where we start, where we have the detector here. So we have a constant magnetic field, but we no longer have the electric field. So this charge is now going to move, if you look, it's going to move in a circle that looks like this, with a certain radius r. When it does that, we can now go through and sum the forces in the in direction. If we sum the forces in the in direction, we get the magnetic force is equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. Oh, let's see. So the magnetic force, again, give it to me, Travis. QVB sine theta is equal to mass times, I will just use again tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. Please. Enthusiasm is awesome. We get Q times V times the sine of is equal to mass times the tangential velocity divided by the radius. Again, the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field class is 90 degrees. Therefore, we get uh, QB is equal to mass times the tangential velocity divided by the radius. Well, we already solved for the velocity is equal to the electric field divided by the magnetic field. In other words, uh, let's see, we can solve for whatever we want here. We can solve for, usually we end up solving for something called the mass to charge ratio, which is equal to, if we solve this, uh, we get Rb squared divided by the electric field. You can solve for all sorts of things, but that is generally, uh, that's where it was originally performed to figure out the mass to charge ratio of various charges. Um, then you could also figure out whether it's positive or negative, depending on which way it goes in the detector array, whether it goes up or down. You could figure out using all sorts of things. Look, you can see exactly what we got out of this. Now, do notice that this assumes that the magnetic field in the detector array and the velocity selector are the same, which is not necessarily the case. 